Hey. Hey, good morning. You guys excited for this morning? For this day? It's going to be amazing. Hey, let's all stand. We're going to worship this morning.
you worthy, Lord. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. Gotta take King of Glory. We bow down to your authority. Worth a thousand. Hallelujah. God oh, the Father, rich in mercy, my Jehovah, you are worthy, worth a thousand. Hallelujah. Oh,
There was a moment when the lights went out When death had claimed its victory The king of love had given up his life The darkest day in history There on a cross they made for sinners For every curse is blood atoned Final breath that it was finished But not the end we could have known For the earth began to shake Oh, see. 
deserve it all. You deserve it all, Lord. Oh, hail King Jesus. Oh, hail King Jesus. Yeah. Oh, hail King Jesus. Oh. Victory, we're gonna make your praises loud. The enemy has 
has been defeated And death couldn't hold you down We're gonna lift our voice in victory Gonna make your praises loud The enemy has been defeated And death couldn't hold you down
It doesn't make sense. We'll never comprehend the way you love us. It's unthinkable. Only heaven knows just how far you'd go to say you love me.
We thank you, Lord. We thank you for how far you went. And God, I ask that our prayer this weekend would be, how far can we go? How far can we go to show you how much we love you? How deep can we go to show you? How extravagant can we get, Lord? It's our desire that you would be honored, that, that you would be pleased, that you Lord, would be glorified through our lives, even this weekend. Mark this weekend in our history as a time that we went deeper. And we invite you, Holy Spirit, to increase and increase throughout this day, tonight, tomorrow. Just increase. Lord, we say, have your way in this place. Have your way in us. We want you, God. We need you, God. Lord, I'm just overwhelmed at your graciousness, at your love, at just your choice to be here with us. Lord, you humble us with your presence, and, and we're grateful, and we thank you, and it's our pleasure and our joy to worship you, to give you time, to look into your face, to see those eyes of extravagant love. Lord, it's our pleasure. It's our honor. And so, God, take us deeper, deeper still, Lord. We value you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. And Lord, we ask that you would do whatever you want to do, if you want to heal, if you want to deliver, if you want to interrupt any of our plans, Lord, your plans override everything. So we just say that, God, have your way. Amen. Thank you, worship team. That was good. You know, this morning as I was coming in, I ran into a friend down there who greeted me in the hallway. And I re I, we're not great friends, but I remember 12 years ago, 12 years ago when we were at the other building, I was in a room in the healing rooms and she came in not knowing God and we got to lead her to the Lord. And it's, it's awesome to see 12 years later, going so strong. It's awesome. So you never know, even this weekend seeds you sow into a brother or sister, the impact it'll have for a long time. And then also uh, on the way in this morning, I live in Napomo and I was driving and I just passed up, those of you who know, I passed up Vaughn's and there's like this downhill entrance into the freeway and I was going 78 and I look over and there's a highway patrolman and I'm on the phone on Bluetooth to my daughter-in-law in Georgia, and I'm like, oh, no. And she said, what? And I said, I'm going 78, and there's a highway patrol. And I said, oh, please, God, don't let him come after me. So I'm driving, and sure enough, he comes down, and I'm like, oh, I don't want a ticket. And I just prayed in front of her, and I said, please, God, give me grace. So anyway, long story sto short, he was behind a semi, but I knew he was there, so I'm going 65. I set my speed control to 65 so I wouldn't even go 66. He followed me all the way from Napomo until I got off on Santa Maria Way. And right before I was about to get off the freeway, and he was behind me for a lot, long time, his lights go on. But he pulled over someone else, and I thought, oh, they got the ticket I deserved. <laughs> and that's a perfect picture of grace. I did deserve a ticket, but I didn't get it. He deserved it too, but anyway. <laughs> God's awesome, so that saved my morning. Uh, my husband's not here, so I could tell that story. <laughs> so I have a few announcements, but before I make them, I'm going to have my good friend Cindy Goff come up here. She has been our senior worship leader 
since almost the very beginning of the Healing Rooms 18 years ago. And she's led worship for conferences all over the world and uh, has written songs that have gone around the world that you probably don't even know that you've sung. And she's amazing. And so I'm going to have her share for a few minutes. Thank you. That was a gracious introduction. We are uh, involved with a event that we do here that we want to tell you about. It's called the Central Coast Worship Connect. And uh, one of the Healing Rooms missions is to support the local church. So we began to ask the Lord, okay, what does that look like? Well, one of the things, of course, I'm personally aware of is that worship leaders uh, get very isolated and secluded into their own church. And so it was in my heart to not only gather them, but to develop a worship school on the Central Coast. We have a lot of gifted worship leaders on the Central Coast, and they have a lot. So I began to pray, and we prayed with the team, and I prayed with Jim Douglas and Cindy, and we prayed and prayed and just said, okay, God, what does this look like? And then we just said, we have to step out and do this. So we invited people to come, and oh my goodness, worship leaders came. And we invited their spouses to come as well because the spouse is very involved with the worship leader, obviously. They're one. And so we did our first one and we learned some things. And then eventually we developed uh, a pattern where we would have it three or four times a year. And we landed on Tuesday nights so that it's not interfering with weekends or Wednesday night service. And we would do it for three hours. And we would jam pack that night for worship leaders for three hours. Then we began to invite their teams, and then it was anybody who loves worship could come. So we just kept growing and growing. But all that to say, um, what we were, we were shooting for is to see a school of worship. But the foundation that God told us to lay in developing that was a grassroots event developed in relationship. He wanted that foundation and that eventual school to be founded in relationship. And so we began to, okay, how can we do this and develop relationship? And the three areas that we um, really hit hard were, number one, their personal time with Jesus. If you're coming to lead worship and your lamp is empty, it doesn't do much for the presence of the Lord. So we began to, to work on that and then also on giftings and talents. We had nuts and bolts session, and then we also developed, um, uh, we felt like the third thing was giving them a vision for the region so that that would pull them out of their own uh, little circle and their own little micro world. Um, and as we began to do that, it was amazing what God would show us. And the last time, um, we had it, there were 21 churches that came. That's, that's a lot of churches. And so uh, one of the things we would do, and I, I just want to say, I know you're not all worship leaders, but what I'm giving you right now are seeds and principles for your own life. Your voice, every one of you, is important. Every one of you has gifting. So what I'm sharing, I want to lose seeds in you so you can be, uh, ask God, how would you, use me to affect my region and get, get bigger in your thinking. So what we did was we would lead worship. Um, we would uh, have them say who they were and where they were from and have them raise their hands and we would count. And the minute uh, we were done with that, we would bless all the churches and the whole room would shift. Everybody would feel this connection. Then we would do a personal testimony relationship was happening and it really was exciting to watch. And then we would end with a teaching, a short teaching. It's a weeknight and we understood that. And uh, we would activate whatever was being taught. Everybody would either get a word or get prayer, go through a fire tunnel. When we did this event, we would uh, usually, it would happen during our school of supernatural. So our students would be involved and we would have these two different events at the same time we combine them and the students would give the worship leaders and their teams they would go around the room and they would give them encouraging words so it was really fun to connect two different things and and be one in it uh, for building relationship and out of that we have had uh, a worship school last october with steve swanson 
and we have another one coming up this October, so I'm going to make sure all of these are available to you and you can give them to your worship leaders and really encourage them to come because a school is developing here, and I know that's growing, and we've uh, collaborated with Steve. He's going to be coming regularly, and we're going to set up regular times in the year where uh, we're doing a school of worship. Uh, how I want to uh, end this, though, is that I felt like the Lord said, I really want people to start thinking about their region. And one of the ways you can do that is start asking God, what is the prophetic word for our region? Because it's not just worship leading. It's what mountain of influence does God have you interested in? What is he calling you? There's seven. Figure that out and find out what God is saying. Our prophetic word on the central coast, there's several, but the one that hit me the most was in the last days, the central coast will be a region of refuge. What does that look like? How can I uh, join in with God's end time plan? Well, I can tell you one thing. This is a big one, and it's a freebie for everybody, is a key for your region is to be connected to Israel in some way and to support Israel in some way. Every Christian that's a free spot on the bingo card. You can be sure that God will bless you if you start praying. And if you don't feel a heart connection to it, then ask him to give you a heart for it. Start praying Psalm 122 and see how you can support Israel and, and pull that into your region's prophetic words. So uh, I'd just like to end with having you stand up, and I want to release an impartation for every one of you. Every one of you are either visionary, you're entrepreneurs, there's managers and uh, organizers and networkers. Those of you that have vision but aren't that good relationally, ask God to bring you people alongside of you. And God is interested in using every one of you. And you can have an international call, you can have a national call, a nation call, you can have a region or state call, you can have a neighborhood call. If you're a stay-at-home mom like I was, you were homeschooling, I used to call up my neighbors and say, hey, let's get together, you know, once a month or once every other month. And you know what? They would all show up. And they didn't all have to be saved, but God used that. And we would listen to each other's stories, and they would, we would tell them about our, our lives. And I would get to pray for them. I had so many opportunities to be able to touch people's lives, just in your own neighborhood or your own apartment complex. So I just want to say, God, I bless every heart here, every man and woman. I bless their call. And I ask, Lord, that you would release a seed in them, Lord, to gather, to build relationship, because this reformation is a lot of ours. It's a resurrection. It's a rebuilding. It's a restoring. It's a resetting, God. It's a reforming, God, out of, Lord, your love for us in the earth. So I bless them with this seed of relationship being connected hugely to reformation. And I ask, Lord, that you would also give them a connection to support Israel and to support your prophetic words over their region. And Lord, that you would speak to them in the night, you would speak to them in their day, and God, that you would light them on fire for what you're doing in your end time plan in Jesus' name. Amen. Good job. Thanks, Cindy. Okay, just a couple things before we begin. Um, so the speaker's resource table is in this room right back there. Make sure you check that out. The different speakers will have books, CDs, whatever they have. And they're there for tools for us, not just so they can sell something, but so that you can have something to go home with and further equip you. They're really good things, so check that out. Today, I mentioned this last night, but today, right after this session, in the parking lot at the main entrance, we're going to have a gourmet food truck. And so they have all kinds of good foods. I got a tri-tip sandwich last year, and it was amazing. So they have a variety of things. So we have some tables out there. If you want to stay here for lunch, it's, it's a good choice. And then at 2 o'clock, did all of you get a paper today about the workshops? Okay, good. So we have six workshops, and you can pick two. There's three at 2 
and then three different ones at three. So the two o'clock ones are myself in the house of prayer, and I'm going to be teaching on praying the word uh, Lectio Divina, which is divine reading, and just how you can take time and have encounters with God. It's amazing how you just isolate a scripture and focus on it, and how the presence of God just, because he's the living word, and when you do that, he comes. So I'm going to talk about that. And then also at, let me make sure I get these right, also at three is, uh, two rather, these are the first ones, Sarah Meyer will be, she's a fiery young preacher and uh, just has such a heart for God and she's going to be sharing some about the hearts of the children turning to the fathers and the fathers to the children and what she's doing on a campus here in Santa Maria with a Jesus club, it's phenomenal, lots of kids are getting saved, so if your heart is at all for that, that would be a, a good one to go to. And then also at the same time in the classroom, which there'll be directions to all of these places, is Luba back there who is our our events coordinator, and we have um, just young men and women here, 20s, 30s, that are great speakers that God's raising up and giving them like practice, and she's been teaching uh, once a month on a Wednesday for I think a couple years now, and just growing in her gifting as a teacher, and she's really, really good. She's going to be talking about defeating your giants, learning to um, rain when the enemy is chasing you and looking a little bit at the life of David and that'll be really good too. So you can only pick one of those and then at at 250 you can change rooms if you want or stay in the same room but we'll have, be having three more speakers. The first one is Sabrina and I think she left this morning but she is an amazing very prophetic woman and she did prophecy rooms in Kansas City for, I think, 16 years. And now her and Graham moved here a couple years ago, and she started prophecy rooms here on Thursday mornings. If any of you ever want a word from the Lord, it's worth a drive over here on Thursday morning. You can sign up, and amazing things have been happening. But she's going to be sharing on prophecy. And then the other two other classes, one is Amy, who was playing the keys and she's, there she is. She and her husband, Jacob, are up and coming um, young leaders here as well. They both teach, lead worship, and just an amazing young woman. And she's going to be talking about husband and wife ministry. She was working another job, and Jacob was here. And just this year, it just felt like the right time. And so she came on staff as well. And they're a, they're a good example of a young couple working together, husband and wife. So if that appeals to you, you can go there. And then the last one for the second hour is Regina. Are you in here? I can't see if she is, but anyway, her and her husband John head up a ministry here called Bridge Ministries, and it's a marriage ministry, and they have an amazing testimony of going through fire, and God chooses to chooses for you to, to stay together instead of split up, so they they do um, appointments, marriage appointments, they have classes, they have date nights, they have all kinds of things going on. So she will be sharing on marriage. And so if that appeals to you, pick that one. Like I said, pick two, and that'll be happening this afternoon. So speaking of Kansas City, Julie Meyer was there since day one, and you know, I've heard her worship before I ever met her, and, and I really liked it and liked her heart, but sometimes when you see somebody and they're up there doing stuff and their heart seems great, but you don't know them in person, you just don't know. But she moved here, was it three years ago or three and a half years ago? And I've got to see her behind the scenes, and she is the same all the time. And I've seen her walk through a couple of difficult places with such grace, and such a godly heart, I, I am seriously, it has inspired me. And I've thought about, well, Julie handled this this way. I can do it. <laughs> and so she is an amazing woman of God with such a beautiful voice. And she is very nice and is giving me piano lessons. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Lori's my best student. You can learn a new craft, you know, in your 40s, 50s, and 60s. You just have to practice. That's the key. That's why lessons are so good, because mostly it's our accountability that we don't. Um, I love your story about the grace and the ticket. Uh, so that didn't happen to my husband when um, we actually had to pay the ticket. But grace, grace, you know. Um, I am so excited to be here. Um, 
I'm so excited. I had my phone this morning because I just got a text from uh, the pilot that is bringing Jen Johnson and her interns here. They are headed our way. And I feel like my my heroes are here this weekend. I love Misty. I, I knew Misty Edwards when she was one of the very first interns in 1999 when the House of Prayer started. You know, she knew two chords on the piano, but she was faithful with those two chords. And, you know, everywhere in the earth you go, people are singing her songs. I love that, and I love, I love Jen, and so I feel like it's going to be a really powerful conference. It's just getting better. Amen? Okay. Woo! Okay. Yeah, and you can yell. I, I'm a yeller. I have all boys, so... Um, I want to give this away. This is our God is alive. Okay. All right. All right. You were fast. Our God is alive. Okay. Oh, oh, I'm a, there you go. Uh, it has our unto the lamb on it. We sang it last night. And this, let me tell you about it, what it is first. Because uh, this morning I'm going to be putting a tool in your hand. And that tool is for every single person, even if you're not a singer. That tool is called singing the scriptures and giving you some testimonies. And, uh, but so what we did is we had a CD made that is called Sing, and it is seven different musical progressions that you can put on. If you play an instrument, you can practice to it. If you don't, you can put this on, open your Bible to the Psalms, and just sing. Or if you're a rapper, you can rap, okay? How about clear back in the back with the black sweater? Yeah, is it you? Clear. Oh, you, you, yeah, 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 yeah. There you go. So, yeah, do that. Um, and I, I have a new book out called Singing the Scriptures. Um, let me see. Okay, the clapper right there in the back. Woo, come on up here. Um, I just believe in singing the Word, and I've just had incredible... Um, just breakthrough in my own life, and God bless you with that. And you are forgiven. She's got a shirt on that's so forgiven. Um, you know, in 1983, that's when I met uh, Mike Bickle, and, you know, he always just had us singing the Bible, singing the Bible. And as a worship leader and traveling the world, I began to see that Singing the, the word is not just for worship teams. And I, I just wanted to break that glass ceiling that it's only for the worship teams. Because singing is very, very powerful. And they're actually finding medical and scientific breakthroughs in our natural human body if you will sing. And, uh, you know, um, and people say, oh, I have a terrible voice. It's not about having a good voice. Although many people, when they start singing the scriptures, because the word is alive. So if you're singing it over yourself, it has to do what it says it will do. Okay. I mean, that's just how it is. You know, you can't, if you don't know what to pray, will you grab the Psalms? And um, I just have seen so many amazing breakthroughs, healings, breakthrough in emotional, uh, just breakthrough in healings, uh, in finances that I just, I want to say this is for every single person. And I can, I feel like I have longevity in my history in God that I can tell you that the thing that has kept me fiery with oil throughout my life is singing the scriptures. And I'll tell you what, um, uh, a lot of people are finding their voice again. One of the most, uh, I think, miraculous things is when we begin to sing, and at the end of this, we're just gonna do activation so that you're singing the Bible, but they've, they, they have a memory of somebody saying, oh, don't, don't sing, you just sound terrible. You're not a singer, just don't even try. And that's really a curse. And so they're remembering that, pulling that arrow out, they're actually finding their voice again. That spirit of fear is broken. I mean, it is a powerful 
thing. You are a loaded weapon. Be careful where you point yourself. Okay, I mean, come on. I love that. And Anyway, um, can, can we put up my... I have some slides that I wanted to give you some scriptures so that you can have this. The, Colossians 3.16, and this is Paul um, writing, and he says, let the word of Christ dwell, and that word dwell means let it take over you. Don't invite the word of God for a short stay but let it overtake you. Let it, let it be the thing that, that helps you make choices for righteousness when nobody's looking. Let the word of Christ dwell. Let it be alive in you richly in all wisdom, teaching, and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. So Paul is actually encouraging the, or the Colossians, listen, if you want the word, if you want this word right here to be alive in you, even when you're at Kmart, you know, it, it, it's not just at conferences and Sunday mornings. It means it's alive. It's alive. It's working in you. It's guiding you. It's leading you. Then he says, then sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Psalms are the psalms that are in this Bible. Uh, hymns are the hymns written by man. Uh, and the spiritual songs are the songs that just bubble up and when, when you're singing the psalms and the hymns. And I'm thinking, you know, if Paul said to do it, then we need to do it. And it's actually not a new thing. You know, they used to remember the Torah by singing it. The first five books of the Bible. Can you imagine singing your way through Leviticus? I mean, come on. Um, uh, okay, go to the next one. Okay, now this is, this is where I've seen mir miraculous things happen. It says, do not be drunk with wine, which is foolishness, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. And I have been in different places where I've taken, you know, we're just going to sing the psalms today. Uh, I've been with Eli in her, uh, she has a, 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 a shelter for the homeless, and I've went in there, and we've done music class. And what music class is, is I don't pray for people, I don't preach, but we open our Bibles, we would put on the sing CD, and they would uh, write a song or rap a song to the Psalms. And I'm telling you, in my journey of taking, just singing the Psalms into different shelters or into places where they are lost and don't know God and it's music class, I have seen people sober up right, be right before my eyes. I've seen them come into their right mind and all they did was sing the Psalms. And I begin to ask myself, is singing the scriptures literally an antidote for addiction? I'm serious. I am serious. Our words are powerful. So if we're, you know, going around, I'm, if we're speaking negatively about ourselves or whatever, our, you know, some people's addiction is just negative words that they speak over themselves. And our words are powerful. I remember I read Joyce Meyer's book called Change Your World, uh, Change Your Words. And she had all these declarations and a couple of them, and they were all from scripture. You know, one of them was, I have the right percentage of body fat. <laughs> you know, I crave the right kind of foods. And I literally began to just say this. You know, I would sing it. I have the right percentage of body weight. You know, I just sing it, just that one line. And, you know, literally, I lost 13 pounds. I mean, I'm telling you, it was because it was the scripture. It's a great book. And we need the fear of God on our words, 
on our texting, because our texting is our words, on our social media, because that is our words, because our words are powerful and they go out, they affect others, but they affect ourselves in negative and positive um, things. And I, anyway, so, that I, so, so Ephesians 5, 18 and 19, um, I'm telling you, it's, it's powerful. Um, okay, go to, go to the next one. So sing occurs 357 times in the King James Version. Um, uh, mostly, they're commands. Do you know that? You are commanded to sing to the Lord, you know? Okay, go ahead. And this is some great things about singing, okay? Singing works like a bar of chocolate in that it helps produce endorphins, the happiness hormone, but with no excess calories. I mean, man, if that alone... We should just be filling the hallways with singing. I mean, come on. And, and uh, there was another uh, one that said, what, singing, and this isn't even singing the scripture. This is, you know, singing, you know, just singing. Uh, it actually produces that, that hormone that, um, um, that it's like you, you've worked out for an hour. Why are we not singing more? I mean, come on, you know, sing for 10 minutes and you get an hour workout. This is incredible. You know, yeah, now I'm your pep coach. Okay, we need to be singing. And note, it is not just for the people that can sing. It's for every person. I do like to say, you might, even though you're singing the scriptures, you might not make the worship team. Okay, I need to say that. I'm singing the scriptures. I should make the worship. You might not. But you will get personal breakthrough. I call singing the scriptures 100% breakthrough 100% of the time. I'm 58. Woo! And that is my testimony, and I'm sticking to it. And now I get to talk about it, okay? Okay. Let's go to the next one. <clears throat> singing even helps your brain develop. Has anybody said, you are brain dead? Well, sing. <laughs> you just sing. If you want a better memory, this is the best method. Sing. I remember um, uh, my boys, when they would have a history uh, test with all the names and dates that I didn't even know, we would uh, sing a little song. We'd go, okay, let's just... Columbus sailed the ocean blue, or you know, whatever. Uh, one of my boys <clears throat> actually got a detention for singing in class, and I loved it. I mean, I was like, can I have that for their scrapbook? I mean, I loved it. I'm like, yes, you're getting this. Um, okay, one more, I think. If you sing with other people, you'll find yourself feeling more self-confident. Is that crazy? Um, and they're also doing medical studies, and some of this is in my Singing the Scripture book, that uh, now in some of the larger hospitals, uh, when you have minor surgery, um, they will ask you, would you like to have medication, I mean, you know, just to make you more relaxed, or would you like to listen to music? And they're finding that people that say, I would like to listen to music, their body actually responds better to the surgery. They heal quicker, and their stress level is way down than those that said, just fill me up with medication. So, I mean, singing is a powerful tool. And they're, they're using it literally in medical studies. They're using it to reach uh, Alzheimer's. People, and this is all over YouTube also, people that have all, Alzheimer's that literally don't, they don't talk anymore, they just kind of stare at the wall. They're finding if they put music on that they used to listen to when they were, you know, grew up, and they put this music on that they, all of a sudden, they remembered and they started singing the songs, and then they started talking. I mean, 
I, I, I feel like this is nothing new. It's not a new scientific breakthrough. It's called the Bible, and it's what they did, and it's simply recognizing something that our patriarchs did in the days of old for healing, for breakthrough. It is said that David went to war with a sword in his hand and a song on his lips. I mean, can you imagine... Uh, and, and because if you read through the Psalms, there's so many times when David is in a dire situation, and what does he do? He says, I sing to the Lord a new song. If you were surrounded by 3,000 people that wanted to kill you, and their sole intent of living was to kill you, would you think, I need to sing? <laughs> but he did. So, so we need to take that. I want to sing to the Lord a new song. David would have meditated and sang from the Torah, the first five books of the Bible, or any Hebrew scriptures that he had at a time. And from that, he began to sing those psalms. And then he wrote many, almost half of the psalms that we have in our Bible. And I feel like this is something that God is literally um, putting focus on in the earth, singing the scriptures and singing the Psalms. Let me tell you one more thing. They found uh, in, in science that, because uh, I, I begin to say, why is it when we sing that literally the, the emotions that we're feeling, that the power of singing can override any negative emotion. Because I did a two-year experiment, and any time, like, offense or frustration, you know, the Christian word for angry, um, but the any time just, you know, just I would feel depressed or melancholy, anything negative would hit me, I made it my purpose. I said, I'm going to sing the scriptures. And so every time when I would just sing, I love the Lord, you hear my voice. I mean, when I began to sing the word of God, that word overtook every single negative emotion I ever had. That is my testimony. And now there are seasons where we're going through, we know from Psalms that David, um, he, you know, there, there's hard seasons. There's broken hearted seasons. But what David did, that's why I love the Psalms, is he started from his place of honesty. You know, everybody's left me. I'm so depressed. But what does he do? He, he's always singing, and he actually, every single time, sings his way to faith and hope and a declaration that God will deliver him. Now, too many of us just stay in the, everybody hates me, you know, blah, blah, blah. and we have to, literally, we need to be our own encouragers. And this is how we can be the best encourager. Sing the word over yourself. Or just get in the shower. Everybody sounds good in the shower because of the reverb, okay? Or get one of those karaoke machines. They have great reverb. Turn it up. Everybody sounds good, okay? If you don't, you know, like, and, and some, you have to push through a little bit. Like, I don't know, I'm not, I'm not sure if I like the sound of my voice. You just got to push, you know, a little bit. Like, all of us, can you do, we can do this. Can you go, ah, ah, ah. Okay, do it one more time. Ah. Uh, okay, now do this. Ah. Uh, uh, okay, see, you're all singers. You've made the team, okay? And the, the awesome thing about singing the scriptures is you don't have to have this beautiful melody, although you might find beautiful melodies. That one, ah. Uh, I love the Lord because he hears my voice. That one, that one melody, actually, that one note is breakthrough for you.
Let me tell you what the scientists have found out. They've been doing all of these tests on the brain, and they found that music, like uh, playing the keys and singing, is the one thing that literally lights up the whole brain and gets the whole brain activated. Uh, like they would have somebody come in with a certain skill, and they would connect all their stuff, and there would be one part of their brain that would, that would light up. Uh, you know, a banker or entrepreneur, a skier, an athlete. But when they had someone come in and sing, or they had someone come in and play anything to do with music, all of their brain began to light up. And they have found that singing is one of the only things that we do in our body where our, whole, our brain is functioning as one. Uh, the, the left side of our brain, that's my talking. The right side of the brain, that's when I add a melody. The back of the brain is the rhythm. That's where I add a melody. And the front of the brain is the emotional response from the song I was singing. So if we're singing the Bible, our emotional response is going to be sealed in our mind, in our heart, in our body because we're singing the living word of God that is alive. And since our brain is working as one, and I, I was doing a prophetic singing workshop and there was a brain, he was a, a friend of a brain surgeon. And he said, I know from my friend that when you sing your brain, function. It actually works together. That's why all those negative feelings and the earth is full of negativity. It's everywhere. It is everywhere. And this is how we battle it. We battle it with our song. Those negative texts, those negative Th you know, thoughts that try and come in, whatever people would speak, they cannot get in if you are singing. It is as if when we sing that our brain is a helmet. You know, you think of Ephesians 6. Our brain is this helmet and nothing, because it comes in when you hear it. So when we sing, ah, uh, we can sing on one note, okay? When we sing anything negative that's trying to, you know, push us down, it cannot get in. So when we're singing, the only thing that begins to come alive are the words that we're singing, okay? That's why our body can actually lose 15 pounds, 13 pounds. I crave the right foods. I don't like laced potato chips. I like salad. I like salad with low-fat drinks. I mean, come on. I mean, I mean, we can sing our way to health. We really can if we'll do this. And it is kind of funny, but um, I, let me give you a little bit of history because it does seem that history repeats itself. And Stacy was talking about uh, Martin Luther last, last night and celebrating the, you know, 500-year Reformation. But the neat thing about what I found out is that this Reformation uh, went hand in hand with a rediscovery of the Psalms of the Psalms. And uh, they, they realized that it was the perfect vehicle to sing and worship God. And the Psalms was central in the spread of the gospel and reformation. Because I believe that the Lord is uh, putting a spotlight on the Psalms again. And, um, you know, uh, everywhere I've turned, I, I, I looked on um, Facebook and I was typing singing in the scriptures because I love to get on Facebook. And if you're musical, you should do this because you can reach the nations from your living room. And I just get on and I type singing the scriptures and then I open the Psalms and I just start singing the Psalms over people. I'm at my keyboard. I just, whoever I see, oh, Jennifer, the Lord. I mean, I just start, I just sing the Bible over 
who over whoever I see. But there's a there's many people that are singing the Psalms. Brian Simmons now is actually teaching a Psalm a week. And, and God is highlighting the Psalms again, even as we're talking about the anniversary of the Reformation uh, and, and how the Psalms played a key part in Martin Luther's life. They are playing a key part today, and God is stirring it up more and more, singing the song. I say, say it, pray it, write it, and declare it. Say it, pray it, write it, declare it, sing it. Those five things go through the Psalms. But oh, I think this is awesome. Um, in um, October of 1517, when Luther posted his, you know, 95 uh, thesis, um, the um, Psalms were a continued um, defining role throughout Luther's life and ministry. And there are some things that I didn't know about this. He always turned to the Psalms for solace and strength. And when the black plague swept across Germany and much of the European continent. During this time, time, Luther's son almost died and his own body was fainting in the midst of pressure. He found himself, um, he went to Psalm 46 and um, he found himself, let me see, I got to find this. He um, singing Psalm 46 and out of that, because this is what happens when you sing the Psalms, you can be the writer. This is what we just talked about. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Sing Psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. And Martin Luther, to get through this season, which is a, you know, hard, it's, I can't even begin. He is meditating on Psalm 46. And out of that, he writes... A mighty fortress is our God, a bulwark never failing. I mean, the words of this song are incredible. I mean, did you know that? <laughs> uh, that's what I mean. That's why you can be the writer of the songs that we're singing in this generation if you, I didn't know, you know, it doesn't say anything that he was a, you know, musician, that he was a singer, or he was on the worship team. No, he went to the Psalms when he was in the darkest part of his life and out of singing and meditating on the Psalm, he wrote, a mighty fortress is our God and we're still singing it. Amen. I, I grew up with it. I, I but, um, Anyway, I, so I just wanted to encourage you in that. Uh, and the, the Huguenots, I don't know if any of you uh, in the uh, 16th, 17th century, the Spirit of the Lord fell on uh, a group of people in France. And when I was in France, I, 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 I actually, you ever heard anybody say, I found myself in France? I found myself. I mean, I really did because when we did our generations, I'm, I'm Huguenot which is so fun because the, what the Huguenots did, they were persecuted because they left the Catholic Church because they wanted to read the Bible. And at that time, the only people that were allowed to read the Bible was the Catholic priests in France. And the, the Spirit of the Lord fell on the babies, babies that were too young to even talk, and they began to say, repent. And so they were like, what does repent mean? What does that mean? So they began to, um, you know, want to know more of the word. And it was, it was against the law to read the Bible. And they began to be the most persecuted group. I mean, um, they were killed because they were reading the Bible, specifically the Psalms. They used to walk, the women used to walk for miles back in the hills uh, in, in southern France just to um, sing the Psalms. They would gather there. It was a secret group because it was against the law. They were put in prison. I visited there. It's just 
just a very heavy place. They visited there, um, or they, I, I visited there, but they took the, this book of Psalms and to steady their heart, what they did is they sang the Psalms. And uh, the last time I was there, I was actually given a, it was a, it's a 17th century, um, it's a little book called the Psalms, and it's in, it's in French, and the women uh, used to wrap it up in their hair, and then they would go back into the mountains, and they would sing it. They would lose, they were losing their life because they were so hungry for the scriptures. So, they were thrown in prison because they were so hungry for the word of God, and what kept their hunger stirring and passionate and fiery is they were singing the Psalms. And again, I think we've got to sing the Psalms. We need to sing the Psalms. If it worked for fiery Huguenot women and men, if Martin Luther wrote, you know, a mighty bulwark in the midst, a mighty fortress in the midst of great hardship, and that's another thing, in the midst of great hardship, I'm telling you, God can, will break in and your life will be a, a, a instruction to others. Just like Martin Luther is an instructor. This is how we walk through crisis. Sing and meditate on the Psalms. It's been passed down. Uh, George Whitfield and uh, John and Charles Wesley, part of the First Great Awakening, um, if you know, know those names, uh, John Wesley, great preacher, uh, Whitfield, great preacher. And, but Charles Wesley, he uh, wrote hymns from his brother's sermons, John's sermon, because they realized that people remembered a song more than they remembered a sermon. So one of the ones that I love that we'll all know is uh, when they began to preach about the birth of Christ, they wanted everyone to understand the beauty and the power of the birth of Jesus. And they wrote, Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn king. And they were hoping that that song would last last throughout their generation so that people would remember about the birth of Christ. And guess what? We're still singing it. That is the power of our, of our singing. Because we, when we sing it, we, it's one of those things we pass down and we pass down. Can you remember songs that you sang when you were young? I can. I, a peanut sitting on a railroad track. Its heart was all a flutter. Around the bend came number 10. Look out, peanut butter. Ain't gonna rain no more, no more. Ain't gonna rain no more. How in the heck can I wash my neck if it ain't gonna rain no more? I learned that when I was five, okay? I would love for it to leave my brain. I would much rather sing psalms. But anyway, I'm just saying, this is the power of the song. And it's actually, that actually has a um, medical term. If you have a song in your head that you can't get out, and I hope it's not that one. I hope you don't sing that. If, it's called an earworm. And it's this, it's a melody that you can't get out of your head as much as you would like to do it. And I thought, well, I want the earworm to stay there if it's got the word connected to it, okay? That's where we want it. Because when you're singing, when you're humming, that is your tool that I want you to pick up because the powers of darkness, the drug lords of darkness that want to kill your breakthrough and stop your destiny, they can't get in if you are singing and medical science is now proving it. So I love this. Science and the word of God have met up perfectly and we need to take up this tool. And let me, um, let me give you just a couple Psalms because I've, there's, there's great breakthrough in some of these Psalms that I didn't realize until, until I started singing them. Um, can, you, can you put that next slide on? I, okay, so th this right here, just so you can kind of get a picture, this is right outside Bethlehem, and uh, I actually took this picture. 
So um, these are the back hills that David would have encountered the Lord. These are the back hills, and it is nothing but dirt and sand, scorpions, and heat, okay? Uh, and go to the next one, I think. This is where David encountered the Lord. I mean, some of the most beautiful psalms in the midst of nothing, no air conditioning, I mean, no chocolate cake, I mean, nothing. <laughs> No Lay's potato chip. I mean, nothing. Some, the, most of his early psalms were right in the midst of nothing. And he found God in the midst of the desert, in the midst of being the youngest son, tending the sheep. And so I want that to be in your mind when you read through some of these songs. There was nothing there. Being a shepherd was considered to be the lowest on the social scale. There was nothing lower that you could be than a shepherd. And so when David wrote most of his psalms in his early years, he would have been in, he would have already been anointed as king and sent back into right there where you see that. That's where David uh, wrote these psalms. So in the midst of your desert, in the midst of your heat, in the midst of your wilderness is your greatest heart encounter and heart connect with Jesus Christ. That's what David did. That's what he shows us. But let me give you, I just want to give you a couple things about a, a couple of the psalms. Um, psalm 1. Psalm 1, if you need a financial breakthrough, sing Psalm 1. I mean, it's crazy. You know, is it prosperity? I don't think God wants us to be poor. You know, he doesn't. I think that, what well, you know, if, you, if we're struggling with finances, Psalm 1 is your psalm to sing over yourself. I like to say this. Number one, you break that spirit of poverty by giving. <laughs> Given the offering every time. It really does. I, I mean, we broke it over our lives. Number two, sing Psalm 1 over you. You know, well, I don't get into prosperity. I, I mean, I don't, I just get into God and he said it, okay? This is what God said. This is an incredible Psalm and this is an instruction Psalm. Psalm 1 is giving you and I the instructions on how to live life. And I want to know, don't you? So he writes, uh, blessed is the one who does not follow the advice of the wicked or stand around with sinners or join in with mockers. And in verse two, but they delight in the law of the Lord, meditating on it day and night and night and day. This is how David wrote. Uh, most people think David wrote Psalm one, but David is giving us the instructions. This is how you read the Psalms, but this this is how you live your life. Live it by way of Psalm 1. Blessed means happy. It means this is how you're supremely content if you don't go this way, but go this way. And he says that your delight, and that word delight, it means that your chief, your chief joy, the thing that you love the most in life, more than anything, is meditating on the law of the Lord or the word of God. And the word meditate, it means several different things. It means, um, it's not just quiet contemplation, although that's good because we always think meditation is quiet. It isn't. Meditation means to talk about it. It means to utter it. It means to think about it. It means to debate it. You know any debaters? I got to all boys, and they debate everything. Um, but it means, it means it's on your tongue, it's on your mind, you're thinking about it. It means to ponder it, and it means to roar it. You know that? That meditate means to roar. And I think what sounds more like a roar than singing? I mean, sorry if I hurt your ears, but I mean, that sounds like a roar to me. Amen. Um, so let me see. The ungodly. Let me give you a couple descriptions. The ungodly. Uh, 
they are the ones casting off the fear of God and living in the neglect of their duty to him. Uh, sinners, they are determined for the practice of sin. Uh, the scorners, they openly defy all that is sacred. They scoff at religion and they make a jest of sin. And I'm telling you right now in our world, what seems to be the loudest voice are the ungodly, the sinners, and the scorners. And it is time for the believers of God to be the loudest voice. And I'm telling you that God will use your voice and your sound, whether you are a singer or not, for his purposes. It is time for the body of Christ to roar the word of God out. It, and I'm, I, I don't, or I'm gonna, I, as Rick said, I'm gonna, I might just start preaching, okay? Um, but, and, and what's so beautiful about this? You know, if you think, oh gosh, Lord, that's not my chief delight. The, mo the most beautiful thing is pray it. Ask God. Lord, sing it. God, let your word be my chief delight. Just sing it because it, when you sing again, and you ought to try this as an experiment, tonight in worship, as you're singing, think to yourself, can I think of my grocery list for tomorrow? You cannot because you're singing. And I want that to really get in. So if you don't, if you say, God, I, I just read your word and it's dry, then you can just turn that into a prayer. Lord, let my chief delight be meditating on your word day and night, night and day. You can literally turn that into a prayer and sooner I mean, literally, what will happen if you will consistently do this throughout your day? Because you don't need the whole psalm. You just need one line. One line will last you for months. It's how I kept my sanity when I had identical twins, okay? All through their early years, I just would have one scripture because I couldn't get up and have devotions, but I could sing one scripture. And I had it everywhere in the house. And there you go if you have small kids. But there's an amazing promise in here. So if you're meditating on the word day and night, if you're talking about it, you know, talk about it to yourself. I always talk to myself. Uh, but talk about it. But it's key. Your ears need to hear your sound. Not just me singing or other people singing, but your ears need to hear the sound of you singing for breakthrough, okay? Okay. But then he says, um, and this is your promise. This is an incredible promise. If you delight in the law of the Lord, if you meditate on it day and night, you are like trees planted along the riverbank. And let me just get to the, my, oh, this is so good. Um, hold on. Ah. Okay, so you are like a tree planted by the rivers of water. If you have the Psalm 1 or the scriptures on your heart day and night, night and day, you are like a tree that has a continual source of water. Isn't that awesome? And this is, this is the other promise that he's saying. This, your tree, it will never wither away because it's getting exactly what it needs all the time. This is you. If you will meditate, roar the scriptures, sing the scriptures right there. Your roots, they're, go they're going deep, deep, deep. No matter if you are in the wilderness, if you're in the desert, it doesn't matter. Your roots are going deep in God and you are being sustained by the word which is like fresh waters. This would also be a tree that is strong and stable, sinking down deep roots. In every single season, there will be fruitfulness and flourishing. This is your promise. I mean, did you know that? I didn't. You know, I mean, oh yeah, I know Psalms 1, but when I just, when I began to sing it, I thought, what an unbelievable promise. Do you need breakthrough in employment? 
Do you need breakthrough in finance? Do you need breakthrough in your, you know, occupation? Are you an entrepreneur? I mean, whatever, this is your psalm. And then he says that it brings forth its fruit in its season. We will bear fruit whose leaf also shall not wither. Whatever we're going through, the brown, the dead, withered leaves are signs of death and dryness. The righteous man does not have these signs of death and dryness, even in hard, harsh seasons. This is that beautiful, but this is key. And David wrote this and he says, and whatever he does shall prosper. I mean, you, we need to be singing this over ourselves. We need to be singing this over our family. We need to be singing this over our church, over our city, over our workplace. Whatever we do will prosper. That word prosper, it means you'll succeed. It means you will spring up, you will spring out, you will have breakthrough. Even if it doesn't look like it, God is going to bring breakthrough in your season. So if you, if you feel stuck, Psalm 1 is your psalm. I, I would sing Psalm 1, but then what I started doing is I started singing Psalm 1 over my family. Uh, I started singing it over my kids. I started singing Psalm 1 over my father, my brother, because um, my, me, myself, and my, other, my sister, Penny, we knew the Lord. I gave my life to the Lord at 17. And everyone, they gave their life to the Lord, but it, well, they weren't living that. And I'm telling you, this is where um, it's not always a week. Where singing the Psalms really helps us is it keeps us steady, and fiery, even in the long seasons of waiting, because sometimes there's a wait. And in the middle of the wait, there's a war, trying to, it'll never happen, blah, blah, blah. Well, okay, this is your tool. Blessed is the one who does not take counsel in the guilty, but his delight is in the word of the Lord, in the word of the Lord. That's your weapon right there. Your melody with this all-powerful word. And I want to tell you this amazing testimony because um, that kept me steady for years. Sometimes it's a week, sometimes it's years. But it keeps you steady and fiery if you will do it. And I'll tell you, if you will sing the word, it, suddenly it just becomes part of you. And you don't even have to think. If, if a battle comes your way, you don't even think about it. You just go, I love the Lord. I mean, it just comes out of you. This is my weapon as if you are in war and the enemy is coming at you with their weapons drawn and ready to shoot. When you are hit with negativity and the drug lords of darkness that want to take your destiny, your family, your life away from you, this will be your tool of weapon and your tool of breakthrough. And it's your song over you. This is our promise from the Bible. It's what our patriarchs did in the word of God. That's so powerful. I began because the word goes out. You know, when it goes out, Hebrews says it, it doesn't come, it, it won't come back void. I would just point myself in the direction of Wamego, Kansas. That's where my family lives. I would sing Psalm 1, and I would put my family's name in it. And I'm telling you, just within the last six months, um, my brother called me, and he goes, oh, you know, I, I started going to church, and I want you to know I, I just auditioned, and now I'm the drummer for the worship team. He hasn't went to church since I made him go. And he does not have good memories of that when he was in second grade. So he calls me. And I, when I go home, I don't preach. I just love him. Doesn't do any good. Okay, just put a cork in it. Hit, hit your knees. Point your loaded ammunition into their direction. Okay? I would just go, blessed are you, Jeff. You know, I would put their name in it. 
So he calls me and he goes, I'm, I'm uh, going to church. It's, it's a little church. And then, and then he calls me and he goes, um, I'm going to Bible study. And he goes, can you give me some tips on Ephesians 2? And is, is that in the Old Testament? I mean, he doesn't know anything. God is answering the cry of my song because they are powerful words. That same week, my dad calls me and says, I started going to this Bible study. And he goes, can you tell me about church doctrine? And I went, this is crazy. I mean, as much as I know the word of God works and it's powerful, it is working personally. I believe God is taking the vibration of my song and hitting their hearts. And it's not my passion for them. It's God's passion for them in the Bible. I mean, so I'm telling you, don't nag, okay? Doesn't work. But sing. I mean, sing it. It's like our song, it's, it, it gets caught on the, 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 those vibrations, and I just believe it goes and hits their hearts. My dad just called me last week, and he said, the last Sunday in August, I'm getting baptized. I mean, come on. This is a direct answer to prayer because of my song. And I, my testimony and many others is if you will sing the word, you know what? It can take five years. It can take 10 years. It can take 20 years, but you can stay fiery with the knowledge that that prayer, that song, those words are having their full effect. Even if you can't see anything, this is how you stir up your spirit. David said, I stir up my soul. And the only person that can do it is you. Ah, I mean, that is that awesome? I mean, we got to clap for that one. I mean, thank you, God. I love that. Um, just a couple more Psalms. In, in Psalm 17, especially out of the, um, uh, the, the Passion Translation that I love, he writes, um, and did you know this? In a visitation of the night, you inspect my heart and refine my soul. You refine my soul in the fire till, I fi till you find nothing at all. Did you know that? And all you do is go to sleep, go to sleep, go to sleep. I mean, you want to you wanna start dreaming at night? You need to sing Psalm 17 over yourself. In a visitation in the night, you inspect my heart, refine my soul in the fire till you find nothing at all. I mean, we need to sing this over ourselves so that when we go to bed, I mean, literally at home, I'm like, it's time to I know I'm, I know I will meet him. And this is the beauty. If there's anything in our life that is, you know, contrary to the word of God, he goes after it. Even when we sleep, we never get a break. Even if we're not dealing with it, it doesn't matter. So I'm telling you, can take Psalm 17, sing it over people. You know, I mean, sing it, God, visit them in the night. I mean, this is incredible. Psalm 25, you know, the secret of the Lord is with those who fear them. In the Passion, in the Passion Translation, it says, there's a secret place reserved for the lovers, the lovers of God, where they sit right by him, receiving revelation. The secrets of his promises. I want to be there with you, God. I put that last line in. But the, do you know that? Do you know that, when, that the secret of the Lord is with those who are in awe of him and that it's literally like he put a reserved, hey, can you imagine if all these chairs were around the throne of God? Reserved, reserved, reserved. Re There's a place reserved for you to sit right next to our beloved and receive the secrets of his promises, direct revelation from God. I want to encourage you, sing Psalm 25 over yourself. Amen? Okay, this is good. My last Psalm. Uh, so, psalm uh, 30, verse 2. You need healing in your body? Uh, I begin to sing Psalm 30, uh, and I've been here for three and a half years, 
And uh, I began to just sing Psalm 30, Psalm 30, verse 2. You are my healing God. I cried out for a miracle. You are my healing God, and you healed me. I mean, we need to be singing that. Are you sick? I got an incredible healing right here, and I always say somewhere between the healing rooms and the house of prayer, I literally got a creative miracle in my tummy proved by doctor's reports before and doctor's reports after. And I'm here to tell you that we have a healing God, and if there's something that's not in you that needs to be in you, God is the healer. He loves to heal you. If you need healing in your body, I'm telling you, Psalm 30, verse 2, um, and my last Psalm, Psalm 32. Uh, how many of you know the, the song? It's kind of an old song. You are my hiding place. You always fill my heart with songs of deliverance. Whenever I am afraid, I will trust in you. I will trust in you. Let the weak say I am strong in the strength of the Lord. I will trust in you. I will trust in you. Let the weak say I am strong in the strength of the Lord. So, okay, so you remember it. This is the power of singing the scripture. So that scripture is taken from Psalm 32. And, and we sing that all the time. That's actually Psalm 32, verse 7. But what I found out in Psalm 32, it's a psalm of David, and it is a psalm of instruction. And uh, many believe that David wrote Psalm 32 right after he wrote Psalm 32. 51, which in Psalm 51, he's writing, you know, that's his sin with uh, Bathsheba, and he's writing, create in me a clean heart. And part of that Psalm is he says, I will instruct sinners on the way to go. Well, Psalm 32 is an instruction to sinners on how to get back on the right path. Almost as if in Psalm 1, if you went the wrong direction, Psalm 32 is a fast on-ramp to get to being that tree that everything you do prospers and in your walk with God. But what I want to show you, because we all sing that and we, we, we quote the scriptures, but there is a progression that we see in Psalm 32. Yes, God is our hiding place, but we have to start with verse one. And, and that's why I believe God is bringing the Psalms back to us in the exegesis, the full Psalm, not just one line, but the whole thing. Because there's a progression in this. When David writes, How blessed is the one whose transgression is forgiven whose sin is put out of sight. Yet, yes, what joy for those whose record the Lord has cleared of guilt, whose lives are lived in complete honesty. And so we're, he's, he's encouraging, listen, your life is blessed. When you come before the Lord confessing your sins, it is wiped away. It's gone. It's covered. It is as if it never happened in the eyes of God. But right here in verses 3 and 4, David is saying, when I didn't confess my sin, and he said, my body wasted away, and I groaned all day long. And he said, day and night, your hand of discipline was heavy on me. And what I find so um, 
Amazing about this is David, uh, the scholars, they don't know exactly what was happening in David's life, but they do know that there was some sickness, there was something happening that he was, that he was sick and he needed a breakthrough from the hand of God in his body. And we're also finding out through medical doctors, and Dr. Carolyn Leaf now is incredible, if you know her, that when we are uh, negative or we're holding bitterness, unforgiveness, that our body actually responds to that in sickness. I mean, and it's, it's being proved in medical science that what we think actually our body responds to. So we need a new mindset. We need God's views, God's views on the situation, God's views for you and me. And literally, uh, it's amazing um, what Dr. Carolyn Leaf is coming up with. And David actually writes about it. And he says, when I didn't confess my sin in the midst of my judgments and my offense and my unforgiveness and my bitterness, my body began to die. And I think it's a heavy thing. And um, there's just been many just miraculous uh, breakthroughs if you follow uh, Dr. Carolyn Leaf, who has it all scientifically uh, in, in records, that the power of our thoughts, the power of our words, and if we're holding offense and unforgiveness and just negativity, our body responds to that in sickness. That does not mean every sick person has negativity. And, you know, I want to make that clear. But that our body is responding. And, and David shows us, though, because that what he does in verse 5 is he says, Finally, I confessed all my sins to you and stopped trying to hide my guilt. And he said, you forgave me, all my guilt is gone. And then right there, David writes, Selah, which is just pause and think about that. Psalm 32 is David telling us the directions. Do you need, do, do you need a breakthrough in your health? Do you need a breakthrough in your body? He's giving us the instructions. I mean, I always, every single morning, I just get up before the Lord and, Lord, I just, uh, remind me, forgive me. I mean, I just go before him every day. Lord, forgive me for my mouth. My mouth, it's the worst. I, I literally put a cork in my purse to remind me, don't say it. Don't type it. Don't text it. Don't post it. Okay? Um, but this is, this is key for our breakthrough. It is key for our breakthrough. But then he goes on and he says, Therefore, let the godly, and that's you, that's me, the godly, let the godly pray, uh, you know, just pray to the Lord while, pray to you while there is time. And, and what that means is, uh, it's like in a, in a, seek the Lord while he may be found. Hey, can you look back on your life and actually know that there were seasons where you felt the hand of God and you just knew you needed to give more of your time to him. It was this seasonal thing. In those seasons, seek God. And that means pray day and night, pray continually. Don't stop. Just keep that conversation ongoing. And then this is our promise. There is a promise promise of divine protection if you will do this. Do you know that? And you just can't make this up. There's a promise because David writes, um, let the godly pray, and he says, that they may not drown in the flood waters of judgment or uh, in, uh, in the passion translation, when the storms of life hit you, because they will, when those storms hit you, they will not take you out and they will not overwhelm your soul. You will meet those storms head on with a steady, fiery heart in God. But there is a progression. Yeah, you can clap at that. 
I mean, there's gonna be storms of life, but there is a promise that if we keep that, oh God, I mean, if there's anything, I know several people that literally take communion every morning. It's just having a right relationship with God. And if offense is um, if trying to arise in you or unforgiveness, get rid of it. I mean, get, let it, let it go, let it go, okay? And my granddaughter sings that all the time. I mean, I'm like, sing it, Sophia, okay? No, I'm serious. Sometimes the church can be some of the most angry and bitter people, and we're better. I mean, you know, we have the blood of Jesus that has set us free, and, you know, forgiveness is not for the other person. Forgiveness is for us. Forgiveness actually helps us let that go so that God can actually step into the picture and take, take matters into his hands, and we want that. So I'm just, this is David saying, you know, get rid of offense, get rid of bitterness, get rid of anger. And this is your psalm to sing. Uh, a lot of those lead us directly into emotional brokenness. We can look back on just, um, and, and, and there's, there's things that have been done to many that are not right in the eyes of God. It was not right, and God does not take that lightly. He does not. He weeps with you. He is with you, but he will walk you through forgiveness because forgiveness will help you let it go. It will help offense let go. Offense does not let go of you. You have to let go of it. But God will help you. And I feel that Psalm 32 in this verse is some of the biggest need that we have in the church right now because we can look at people's social media page and I think, do you even know the Lord? And we We've got to look like him. We've got to shine like him. We've got to forgive like him. We've got to love like him, especially if you're debating. You know, it doesn't, the, debating is only works if you're trying to sharpen your knowledge of the word. Not Republican, Democrat, because God, he loves everybody. Come on. Um, but this is, this is a, um, this is a promise, and I really believe that uh, as we're going to get ready to sing the scriptures for a little bit, that God's going to touch you. And if, if the Spirit of God is saying, that's you, you know, you, you've got to let, let this go. He's going to help you to let that go today. And you know what? You're going to start walking in healing. That's just, that's the promise. That's the promise. But then he says, you are my hiding place. So number one, we confess our sins. If we don't, our bodies actually start dying. When we confess our sins, literally, we begin to be strengthened. We begin to be fiery with the word of God on the inside that we can face every single storm of life in steadiness and with a fiery heart in God, and it will not overwhelm us. And then we can sing, you are my hiding place. You protect me. And I think this is amazing. You protect me from trouble. You surround me with songs of victory. I mean, and I think, did David hear that? Uh, we, God actually sings his songs. We are surrounded in song, encircled with God, singing over us the triumphs of the blood of Jesus Christ, the triumphs of grace in our life. I mean, is that not beautiful? I started saying, I want to hear those songs. If you're singing them, if David wrote about it, David heard it. If David heard it, we can hear it. I started singing, David wrote it down so we could sing it out. I'm gonna sing the Psalms that David sang. I believe the Psalms are some of the most supernatural uh, chapters in the word because there's encounter, there's breakthrough, there's protection. I mean, ah, this is your tool of weapon and every single Psalm points to Jesus Christ. Amen? Okay, good. If I can get 
Oh, if Isaac will come up. So what I wanna do as we go out, um, I want you to, oh, this is so good. You are my hiding place. I hide away in you. You keep me from trouble. I shall be encircled in song, surrounded by mercies, all of them proclaiming the triumphs of grace. Is that beautiful? I think that's the Passion Translation. Absolutely beautiful. And then, of course, as David writes, Selah. <laughs> Just think about this. Uh, a testimony as we do this. Um, I was with Chuck Pierce in January, and I was talking about singing the scriptures. And um, after one of the sessions, uh, the, the interpreter for the deaf community came up, and they said, will you come down because the deaf community would like to meet you. And as I was walking down, I was thinking, man, i got to say this in a way so that it affects the deaf community, you know. And when I got there, they were, they were all so excited. They were like, I, I want to do this. And that next day, there was a, and I didn't know anybody, but there was a man that came up uh, during some ministry time, and he began to pray over someone and sing in tongues. And I, I noticed that uh, Chuck Pierce let it go for a while. So, you know, I was, I, and I knew that the atmosphere shifted. I just, I didn't know what it was. And they were praying over someone. And then the next day, uh, another young lady came up. And she, no, it was a young man. He came up on stage and he said, um, I'm, through his interpreter, I'm, he said, I'm part of the deaf community. And he said, but I have to release my sound. And, and he just stood up there and he went, ah. And that's all he did. I mean, but it was the most beautiful pure tone. And he was like, I have to release my sound. <gasps> oh! And then right after him came a young lady and she was uh, talking and they did have an interpreter. And she said, yesterday when the man praying in tongues went up, she said, that's my husband and he is deaf. And Chuck knew that. But that was the first time he went up on stage. He used his tone. He used his voice to pray in tongues over someone. She said, that was my husband. And she said, when he began to sing, my right ear began to pop. And I began to hear something out of my right ear. And I thought, if the deaf community are getting the power of singing and loosing our voice, how much more do we need to learn from the deaf community? We need to release our sound. We have a sound of good news. We have a sound of breakthrough and destiny. We have a sound of prosperity from the Bible. It's not even, oh, that's a prosperity message. No, David. David said it. David lived it. If David lived it, I want to live it. I want all of it. God wants it for you. Amen. So we're going to release our sound this morning. Um, I want you to turn to uh, Psalms 116 verses 1 and 2. It's a great psalm. Um, and I wanna, we're going to sing it in three ways. And then I hope I hear lots of singing in the hallways. I hope I run into you at Target because I've chased a melody down. Because you will be your own biggest testimony. And I can tell you my stories, but when you start telling other people your testimonies, this is the good news of God getting out. And God has given you your own breakthrough. I think he's a genius because anybody can lift their voice, amen? So, and so just what, what we're doing, I'm just going to have Isaac, just give me an easy strum. What key are you in? Oh yeah, D, like D, G, B minor, do something like that. 
So what we're going to do, and I've done this for years. Mike Bickle in 1983 sat me down. You need to sing the Bible, sing the Bible, sing the Bible. So I've been doing it ever since. Number one, we're going to sing straight through Psalm 116 verses 1 and 2. Everybody has a different translation. Everybody will have a different melody. But it will still be beautiful. So don't worry. You don't have to match someone else's melody. We're going to sing it that way first, and then we're going to sing it. There's another way. We're going to make it our own personal prayer. And the third way we're going to practice it is we're going to sing the other side of it. We're going to prophesy it over ourselves because it is the Word of God, okay? So this first time, is that a B minor? Okay, mm, right there, but start with D, start with D, and then go to G, there you go. You can even just keep it simple. Mm. So we're just going to sing it word for word, and you, you all need to be louder than me, okay? So here we go. And just sing it out again. I love the Lord because He hears my voice and my prayer for mercy. He bends down to listen. I will stay as long as I can pray and do it once again. Okay, now I want to just take those same chords. And now you can even close it, your Bible, or you can keep it open. But now I want you to just take it and make it your prayer. This is how David wrote the Psalms. He sang and meditated on the Torah, and then he wrote, he wrote the Psalms. So now, and when you take that Psalm and you pray it, and it's already a heart cry to God, um, suddenly you're not reading about David's a prayer time or David's encounter, when you make it yours, you start to encounter God. You're not reading about David's encounter. It's yours. It is your prayer. Okay? So now we're just going to, you can even close your eyes and uh, this is just your prayer to the Lord. Uh, off Psalm 116. I love you, Lord. I love you, Jesus. I know right now, I know right now you hear, you hear my cry, and you're just making it personal. I know you hear my cry, hear my plea, you hear my cry for mercy, God. And if you get through it, just keep singing it. Start over again. I can see you even now. Bending down just to hear my voice and my cry. Keep singing it out. It's your prayer. Sing it out.
keep singing it out. Okay, and now I want to just um, try it at the, we're going to sing it one more way. And as you begin to sing it, it's like each time you sing it this way, you just feel a little closer to the Lord. I don't know. It's like with every way we sing the word, the atmosphere shifts. It's the power of singing the Bible. You don't know what to pray, pray and sing the Bible, you know. I don't know what to pray, pray and sing the Bible. So this time, and I love this part, this actually will help you learn to prophesy. If you take the word and prophesy it over yourself. So now we're gonna take these words, it's not heresy, it's the Bible. I mean, it is the word of God. Now we're gonna sing it as if God were singing it over us. And we know that he is because it's the word. And so, and I like to say, put your name in there. You know, just sing out your name. Um, and so now you're just singing it, but you're, you're singing it as the Lord is singing it to you because He is. And in effect, what we're doing right now is we are singing out God's all surrounding, encircling songs of deliverance over each other and over ourselves. That's what we're doing right now. That's exciting. So here we go. Oh, I can hear the Lord say over me, I love you, I, I can feel your love, I can feel your heart cry over me. I want you to know, Julie, put your name in there. I want you to know I hear your cry, I hear your song. I hear it all, mm, just keep singing it out, and do you know that right now I'm bending down, I'm your good father, I'm bending down to you, I'm bending lower and lower and lower, 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 I can hear you never stop praying, never stop crying out, just put your name in there again. And then if you get through with it, do it once again. I feel your love, and I want you to know I love you. I hear your voice, I hear your cry. And right now I'm bending down to hear you, because I'm going to answer, I'm going to Put your name in there. I'm bending down to answer you. So never stop praying, never stop crying out. And if you don't know what melody to sing, you can sing it on the very same note. It doesn't matter. Keep singing it. I hear your voice. I hear your song. Mm, I'm bending down. I'm bending down to hear you now. Never stop crying out. Never stop praying, love. I'm gonna answer you. I'm gonna answer you. Could, I, I don't know, could you just feel the atmosphere change? I mean, like, so every single one of you were prophesying right then like it's like you were releasing the word of the lord around you around everybody in here you became god's voice releasing songs of deliverance in the room that's powerful somebody's going to get delivered today i mean somebody's going to get protected from something that the enemy had set up because this this is our promise and this is the power that you have when you're alone and there's no one around you to encourage you you can be your greatest encourager 
if you will sing the word. Now, just to end it, I would love to have three people, and I'm going to call on my friend Joseph. You get to come up. <laughs> okay. So Joseph got a prophetic word last night from Stacy. This is my friend Joseph. And Joseph is actually the singing, prophetic, revivalist chef. He, he won All-Star Academy on the Food Network. His coach was Bobby Flay. He's making on-ramps into media, into Hollywood, because he loves to cook. And he's the singing, prophetic, prophet, revivalist chef. Okay, come on, okay. Okay, well, you, so, okay, come on, come on, I loved it. And Stacy didn't know who it was when she was prophesying, so I loved it. Um, okay, I need two more brave souls. Okay, right over here. Yeah, you, you had a, your hand up, so come over here. I need one more brave, okay, you right here. Oh, good, Sarah B, my Sarita, come on up. Okay, and this will send, will send us out. I want to have a quick prayer time at the end. And, um, oh, yeah, and they can use mine, too. So Sarah, you might want to bring your Bible. Sarah, I'm going to have you sing it, sing Psalm 116, verses 1 and 2. I'm going to have you sing it through word for word. And who is my second one? Okay, right over here. So then you're going to be behind Sarah B, right over here. And you're going to sing it and turn it into a prayer. Uh, Psalms 116, verses 1 and 2, okay? So you're going to take that like we just practiced it, turn it into a prayer. Now, oh, sorry, I know I'm supposed to stay in the light. It's too hard. Oh, yeah, you guys got to all get in the light. Come into the light, okay? All right, everybody, sorry. I drive the light men nuts. I'm sorry, I really am. Okay, so you're going to turn it into a prayer. Uh, you know, don't go 30 minutes because literally you can, okay? And you, my, my sweet friend, are going to prophesy it where you're going to prophesy it and then we'll, we'll go out to a prophetic word. And it, the, the key is if you'll, if you'll actually do it like today, you, you'll, you, you tend to take it with you and do it. Um, and what I want to encourage you, if you say, oh, this just this feels awkward. Well, it's like learning to, you know, if I was going to learn to paint, all I do now is stick men, okay? I, I would have to press into it a little. It's not something that I know how to do. This is the same with singing the scriptures. But you have an enemy that doesn't want you to do it. You have an enemy that wants you to fail, but God is putting a tool in your hand that will actually take out every single enemy that is against you and give you healing in your body, in your soul, in your spirit. It is the truth of what the Word of God says. So, Sarah B. I am passionately in love with God because He listens to me. He hears my prayer. As long as I live, I'll keep praying to Him, for He stoops down to listen to my heart's cry. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. You heard my voice. Cry for mercy, cry for mercy. You turned your ear to me, I will call on you. As long as I live, oh Lord, I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. You heard my voice, my voice, my voice, my cry for mercy. Lord, you turn your ear, I will call on you, as long as I live. Yeah, I mean, that's so good. And 
When, you, when you're singing it and you're saying I, that's the key because what happens is your, your body begins to respond to what you're singing. And if you're singing, I will call on God, I'll never stop praying, you won't. Amen. Okay, go for it. Awesome. I am God and I am listening to you, my son, my daughter. I am listening to every detail as you call out for mercy, as you call out for mercy. I am God, and I am listening to you, my son, my daughter, as you call out for mercy. As you call out for mercy, I am listening because I am God. I am God and I am listening. I am listening. Oh, that was so good. Woo! You get, like, give him another clap. Woo! I mean, thank you, Isaac. Thank you, Isaac. Um, uh, what I love, and this is key, what I love about Joseph is I said, what, uh, when he began, I said, what was it in you that made you, you know, want to reach out and reach the world and, you know, cooking? And, and he goes, I just love to cook. And sometimes the very thing that you love to do because God put that in you, the very thing that you just love to do it just because you love it, that's the thing God put in you to touch and reach the world. So I love that. And then the cooking and the singing, he travels all over the world, so I love it that he's here. Okay, can I put, let me see, one more, uh, one more slide or the last slide up. Um, Okay, uh, so if you want to learn more about singing the scriptures, I actually have a monthly subscription. It's called intotheriver.net. Uh, you can go to that. You can take a picture of it. And we're singing through the Psalms, getting amazing breakthrough. And I believe that the Lord is taking back social media. And I'm telling you, he is. It's been in the hand of darkness way too long. And what he's doing is he's doing different mentorships. And so we have an Into the River. We do weekly Bible studies. We do monthly live interactive classes the last Tuesday of every month. And this a month, our guest is going to be Sean Bowles. So you can, it's just a way for people to actually get to, um, uh, you know, connect with key leaders that God is raising up in the earth. We're singing our way through the Psalms and just the personal testimonies that people I'm getting because people are singing the Bible. And also, I don't know if Stacy uh, Campbell um, mentioned it last night, but she has a mentorship. I don't know if we'll put that. I don't know if we, but what is it? Can you, yeah. Shiloh, Shiloh, okay. Or what is it? Yell it. Shiloh, Shiloh, uh, Shiloh okay, right there. Uh, she has a prophetic mentorship, you know, get trained in the, you know, prophecy and the prophetic. Patricia King has a mentorship. Um, I saw Rick Pino has a men. I mean, get, you can be in your home and get trained by leaders in the earth and literally become the voice that changes your family, your city, your government system, because we want to take these tools and not just, we, we want to change our city, amen? So, okay, anyway, as we leave, I just want to... Um, um, give opportunity. If you, if you need prayer, I, had a, I wanted to just pray for people that maybe you need extra prayer for um, uh, walking through forgiveness and um, uh, forgiveness or offense. And um, I had someone pray for me and it, it just was the thing that I needed. And well, we just, I just want to just pray for you quickly. And if we can stand and if you can put on that last track and uh, 
um, just keep Psalm 32 in your head um, because God wants to touch you and He wants to heal you. And freedom is forgiveness. Forgiveness is not about the other person because sometimes the other person doesn't care throughout their whole life and that's sad. But God wants you free. He wants us free. And the path to freedom is forgiveness and letting it go. So Lord, I just ask God that you would um, just visit every man, every woman in Jesus' name in this room, watching on Facebook, watching on the web stream, God. I ask God that you would empower your men and women with the tool and weapon of singing the scriptures. I pray that it would get in us, that it would guide us, that it would lead us. And I ask that you would send your beautiful Holy Spirit to convict us if we need to let anything go. And I just want to take just a, a minute and let the Spirit of God just speak to you. If a name comes to your mind, to your heart, just quickly let it go. Just say, God, I forgive them. If you let it go, the Holy Spirit will lead you in healing. He'll take away the pain of the memory. God, thank you. And if names come to your head, I just want to encourage you just to release them to the Lord. God, I forgive them. One of the biggest things I ever got breakthrough on is when I forgave my mother. She was an alcoholic my whole life. And I, I had such uh, a sting from that, and I just gave her to the Lord. The last part of last couple weeks of her life, God radically saved her. I'm telling you, forgiveness is powerful. Lord, I pray that you would walk each person that needs to forgive, that needs to let go of offense, let go of anger, let go of bitterness, even if what was done to them was unjust and wrong, would you help every person to let it go and give it to you? We thank you, God, for your pardoning mercy. It's worth more than anything, God. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. And if you want some extra prayer, just come up and... Um, um, then I, I'd love to just lay hands on you real quick.